Hello. Welcome to our first Content on Air workshop. Uh, my name is Barbara Ott. I'm the product manager for Prime. We hosted one in uh, our HQ last Wednesday, but uh, the sound quality wasn't so great, so we're going to do one just specifically on air for our viewers. Thank you for joining. Uh, so I'll just kick it off with a uh, PowerPoint slide deck. We're going to go through that pretty quickly. Um, on the Prime workshop, before we start, we have uh, the ability for you guys to tweet questions to hashtag Ask500PXPrime. We have people manning that, uh, the Twitter desk, and we'll be feeding us questions so that we can answer them for you. Uh, we're going to go through the presentation in its entirety, and then we'll answer all questions at the end. So just you can ask questions throughout the presentation, but we'll answer them all at the end. All right, with that said, what is 500px Prime? So 500px Prime, it was launched in March this year, and it was mainly launched to help our community license their photos for commercial and editorial purposes. So it's really a way for our community to be able to make money on their photos. Uh, we pay the highest royalties, or one of the highest royalties, to photographers at 70%. So we really want uh, this to be a win for our photographers. Uh, and we're selling photos every month, doubling sales every month. Or we're selling photos every day, sorry, and doubling sales every month. So this is a, a viable uh, way for you to make money on your photos, and we expect all of our uh, community to be able to take advantage of this. Uh, we wanted to go over sort of what kind of commercial licensing is because I know there's a lot of questions on that. And uh, the first thing we want you guys to know, and really this is the one key thing, is a license that, which allows photos to be used for commercial purposes. So a commercial licensed photo will be used for commercial purposes such as advertising, product packaging, um, it will be available online. It's mainly a way for somebody to sell products and services. So that's really specifically what a commercial license is. We do offer the ability for you to have editorial licensing, and that's something separate. And we'll go over into that in a little bit. Uh, but just so it's really clear what the commercial licensing is all about. Do you guys have, and we have our content editors here too, so they can jump in if I've made any mistakes. Anything on that that you guys want to? Uh, so far, so good. So far, so good. I'm continuing. <laughs> Uh, licensing terms and rules. We have lots of questions on licensing. Licensing is complex. There's always legal uh, terms that you guys need to know. So we try, we're trying to simplify that a little bit, but we do need to stay uh, adhere, adhere to our terms, so we want to be clear what those things mean. So royalty free. The image will be used for various purposes, but it'll be per client. So if uh, an agency that works for multiple clients purchases an image for, let's say, Nike, only Nike will be able to use that image. Even, they, even though they may have a client like Safeway on their roster, they won't be able to use their Nike image for Safeway. So even though Nike would be able to use it for whatever purposes they want, an agency wouldn't be able to take that photo and use it for another client. Um, any of the photos that are licensed can't be resold or sublicensed or distributed outside of the license agreement. So the license agreement is pretty clear on what the usage rates are, um, and you can't distribute those outside of the, the license agreement itself. And we're actually going to be working on making the license page even a little more simple, uh, only basically converting the terms into sort of real life, real word, real terminology, so that people understand what those mean in a, a little bit more simplified way. So stay tuned for that. Uh, you can't sell any of the licensed photos as standalone products, such as prints or wallpapers. So we want to make sure that's clear. And the last thing that we really want to make sure our contributors know is that as a photographer, you retain your copyrights to the images at all times. So all of the copyrights of the images, you own that. So that you can use your images to promote yourself, etc. But if you do sell your license commercially, there are, and if you sell it exclusively, there's obviously terms that you'll need to know about, which we'll go over. Uh, getting buyers, tips and tricks. So a lot of people asked us what kind of tips and tricks they have to promote themselves, uh, and we we're hoping to help you guys figure some of that stuff out. So making my photos sell. So we, ha we have done some uh, blog posts on keywording tips, and keywording is really important for getting your photos seen by buyers. Uh, now I'm going to hand it over to our content editors who they can give us some tips on, on keywording. Heather? Uh, okay, I'm Heather. I'm one of the content uh, coordinators. And um, I wrote an article a few weeks ago uh, that was posted on our blog all about keywording just to sort of simplify things. 
uh, a lot of our community won't understand how keywords and tags work. So we wanted to just break it down and make it really simple. So the first thing that you can do when you think about keywording your image is to think about who, what, where, when, and why. If you ask yourself those questions, those will give you the descriptive words that you need to describe your image. Um, you want to cover the most important if the most important aspects of your image first, so the most important features. Um, if it's a landscape and there's a mountain and a lake, you want to describe those things. Um, if the location is important, which it usually is, you should, you should definitely have that information as well so that people know where it is. If it gets picked up for editorial, they're going to want to know exactly where that lake is, where that mountain is. Having said that, it's not so important for still life. Um, you don't really need location information if it's a close-up of a flower or, you know, uh, some sort of um, still life setup in a studio. Yeah, so if somebody can't actually see where that location is, yeah. you probably don't need to tag it as a location. Exactly. It's only if it's important to the image. Um, and it's good to add other descriptors in, like you might want to describe conceptually, you might want to use con conceptual words like freedom or, um, you know, thinking ahead or other descriptors like that that might fit that, that image. Um, but it has to fit because if it makes no sense, if it doesn't connect to the image, then it just causes confusion. It's like spamming. Um, you don't want to add words in that don't make any sense or have nothing to do with with the subject or the location or whatever it is. Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> Adding keywords that aren't relevant actually will dis detract people from your photo because when you're show throwing photos that people aren't expecting to see, it is not a positive experience for people. It's counterproductive. It's counterproductive. So when you get a lot of words in there that make no sense and someone does a search for um, you know, a portrait of a woman and up comes you know, uh, a cityscape and a picture of a dog on a beach. Mm -hmm. and it just makes no sense. It frustrates the buyers. <clears throat> it frustrates everyone who's searching on the site. And it just clogs things up. <clears throat> so that's no good for anybody. That's no good no. for you. It's no good for the other photographers. And it's no good for buyers. So it just frustrates everybody. So really think about the keywords that you're adding. Uh, don't spam. Make sure they're relevant. Um, you probably shouldn't be adding technical terms in. You don't want to. You don't want to include camera information. You've got to think like a buyer, and buyers aren't going to search for images based on what make of camera you use or what so, kind of XF data you have. Yeah, what kind of XF data. So you, you just don't need to include that. We see that happening a lot. So um, another thing that you should think about is is checking your spelling. Double check your spelling. Um, words in in foreign languages are not so good because they get they get truncated when they when they convert through the system. So they come up with like weird letters and all sorts, and no one's going to find them. So um, if you don't know the the word in English, then try and do a, a translation, a Google translation, to help you along. And uh, you want to use English words where you can. Yeah. And um, what's what else? What am I missing, guys? You think? Yeah, I think it yeah, covers uh, photographer names. Yeah, yeah you don't want to include names or any personal information. Sometimes we see people putting in their model's name, and that's a big no-no. You don't want to do that. Um, One of the things you did mention last week at the workshop that I remember is uh, when you like just as, because you said personal things. If you're taking a photo of your mother. Right. Don't tag mm -hmm. it as mother if it doesn't actually have context of motherhood. Yeah. You have to think of it uh, objectively. So if, if a viewer who doesn't know you or doesn't know that model looks at that image and they don't see a child or, or something else that gives it context, like maybe a woman who's pregnant or whatever, if there's no context, it makes no sense to an outside viewer. Yeah. So you have to think like a viewer, think objectively. Um, it, you can't type in words that are personal to you, you know, so mother, daughter, whatever, unless there's a child in the portrait and, 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 the, and, the, and the connection is clear. And then the same goes for those terms that are, that are conceptual, like togetherness or happiness, friendship. It has to really convey that message. It can't just be, so you know, vague. yeah, it can't be because that person's your friend. It has to, mm -hmm. the connection has to be clear between the words and the, the concept that's in the photo. And one other thing I remember you guys mentioning last week was um, 
using contextual, I mean, not contextual, emotional terms. So things yeah. like uh, happy, sad. Yeah. Yeah, you can use those things too. Emotions. Uh, buyers do search for for emotions and concepts for, you know, if they have something in particular in mind for a campaign or whatever they're doing. So it is good to, to use those terms. But again, they have to be very clear. They have to be clear to anyone who doesn't know you and wasn't at the shoot and uh, you know it has to be obvious it has to be a very obvious expression color is great we do have a really really neat color search bar mm -hmm. search option so adding that one color to your photo if there's an, a, a basic overall color that can be identified just by looking at the picture including that uh, that color in the keywords is very helpful to us as well but it's got to be the majority of the image like you don't want to start so driving off pink, you know, because there's a little pink flower in the corner, but the lake is actually blue. You know, you don't want to start adding things that don't. If there is sense. one overall hue or tone, yeah. or you're looking at the lake and it's blue, or if it's it's turquoise or light blue, uh, it, include that color. So apologies, we're sort of on Google on air, so uh, and on a Hangout through Apple TV as well. So apologies if I just switch back and forth as I lose connection. Um, Photo quality. So some people ask questions about what kind of quality and what do my photos need to be at for buyers to really take notice of them. So I remember when we, during the workshop you guys were talking about, well, all photos need to be 3,000 pixels minimum on the shortest end. Mm -hmm. um, but additionally, if you blow the photo up really high and you see lots of pixels, that likely wouldn't work for a big print shoot. So being thoughtful about that. Right? Another thing we're noticing a lot of lately is our compression artifacts. Uh, so we need the minimal amount of JPEG compression. I think in Photoshop the uh, the quality rating is 12. Uh, so always the highest possible quality. Uh, avoid filters or plugins that really push the limit of some of the colors. So uh, HDR filters are notorious for this where we see a lot of color noise a lot of uh, compression and pixelization. It may look fine at 500 pixels wide, uh, but when we blow it up and look at it at 100%, or when we print uh, as small as 8 by 10, uh, we really do see those quality issues and uh, customers may ask for a pretty valid refund if the quality doesn't match what their expectation will be. Um, so really watch out for that. Look at your image at 100% magnification uh, and just double check, especially around the shadow uh, areas. Just and what about the up sample, up sampling up? Yeah, something? taking a smaller image and, uh, and trying to make it bigger is not going to help. It's it's just going to deter. More so time. don't you, don't avoid doing that just to get fitted at that three thousand size unless it's so close to three thousand size in the smallest end that it's not going to really make yeah, a difference. Yeah, it's you know twenty five hundred, then up sampling is okay, but. But anytime you're you're processing an image or you're adding adjustments in post-processing and adding filters, um, you know, that's obviously that's fine, that's great. You can be really creative that way. But with any of those adjustments that you make, there's <clears throat> there's a limit, <clears throat> pardon me, there's a limit to what you can do. If you push the image too far, you're going to start seeing some of that, pardon me, <clears throat> my voice um, you're going to start seeing some of that the noise degradation around in the image, yeah. Yeah, every time you apply a mm -hmm. filter, maybe just zoom in. 100%. Check, make and sure much. it's looking good. The thing is, you don't know who's going to use it. You don't. I mean, ultimately, you want loads of people to download your image, and you don't know if it's going to be this size or if it's going to be a thumbnail on a website somewhere. You don't know how they're going to use it, so you have to be prepared that they're going to use it and print it big. It could be on a, yeah. on a billboard. Who knows? Like, but it could be printed this big, and and things really do show up, like pixels and mm -hmm. all that show up. So, cool. Um, logos and trademarks. Where do we where do we sit with logos and trademarks? I know we get a lot of questions about that, and we also get lots of photos that are uploaded that contain logos and trademarks. And maybe people don't really know what are the things that we're looking for. So take it away, guys. I know there's things like boat names and license plate na things that you wouldn't think necessarily would be a logo or a trademark, but anything that would identify somebody's boat or somebody's, somebody's personal car. car. Yeah. Because if you did do that, you would need to get a release from them, right? Yeah. Okay. And so with the logos and trademarks, it has to do with copyright uh, and how other brands can use the photo. So because it's royalty free, there's no uh, control on the very specific usage. So if I have, if I'm a, uh, a competing, uh, you know, sports 
uh, clothing company and I use my competitors' uh, brands or, or, uh, or trademarks in my advertisement, that causes a lot of grief and a lot of uh, legal issues. So we ask that all logos and trademarks uh, are removed or avoided or scrubbed. You can use clever techniques with blurring or Photoshop, uh, composition, uh, placement of objects, uh, get creative. It's not it's not that hard to avoid logos, uh, and in some cases with Photoshop now, the way it is, it's so easy to remove them, the little ones. Um, Especially ones like logos on shirts, like the yeah. little polo shirt god mm -hmm. that has to be yeah. removed. Or I know we talked about there's a photo of somebody sitting with an iPhone beside them, and the iPhone was relatively small, but if you blow that up, you can see the little copyrighted play button. Mm -hmm. That has to go as well. Yeah, if we do if we do reject for logos, we will usually be more specific about why we're rejecting it and what logos need to be removed. Um, but sometimes, you know, obviously with a photo of like Times Square or something like that where you're full of logos, something like that obviously can't be removed. Yeah, and, the editorial. And if you get a reason back from one of the editors that says, hey, yeah, there's logos, please remove them, that means we feel that it's possible to remove it. Yeah. Uh, if we do not feel that it's possible to remove it, you're going to know as well that the reason will be very different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or it's just not that worth it. So if you, know, you do yeah. have a photo of Times Square, while it's a great photo, by the time you remove everything, it's not it's really not Times Square time anymore. Square. So yeah. exactly, and then that would that would fit maybe into more of the editorial, editorial photos. For sure. Yeah. Uh, watermarks. So we know a lot of people want to make sure that their photos are protected, and we want to make sure your photos are protected. But please remove all of your watermarks when you upload them to the store. You can have them in, in 500 pics. Mm -hmm. You can watermark your photos like crazy if you want. But when you upload the photo that will be on the store, make sure it's unwatermarked. We won't ever let that photo be available. No one will be able to take it. And inside Prime, we watermark them all with 500 pics Prime. So nobody can grab that photo uh, off, the, off the Prime website without that watermarking appearing. Anything else on watermarks that we need to know about? No, that's pretty much no, it. And don't be sneaky and try to hide your watermark as we find them. Yes, yeah, you find sneaky watermarks in there, and you guys try, but yeah, we have to read them. Like people will buy the photo without it. We want your your photos to sell. If you do, if we do ask you to remove it, take the time and actually remove it. Yeah. Don't don't try and do, you know just take the opacity down or out of it. Yeah, like it just erodes the the ability for us to sell it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and one question that we had was uh, somebody asked us, should I specialize in specific photos, or so should I be a, like a photo everything and photograph everything on my hopes that my one of my photos will sell because it fits a specific niche? So we talked uh, here amongst the content editors, and really the best way for you guys to sell your photos is look around and find a missing niche and. Photo, uh, pho create photos for that niche. So I know that some of the niches that we are looking at, we're going to be talking about uh, the ability for you to work from any work anywhere. So real life photos of people working from home, working at Starbucks, that type of thing. That's a niche. Most business photos right now that you look in stock photos are like men in suits uh, at a boardroom with computers and technology, and that's not necessarily the way people work today. So that is a missing niche, and if you have photos like that, that would likely sell. Anything on more on that one? Yeah, just follow our uh, at 500px prime PD, which is our photo desk. Yeah, and we refer to it here. And also, I think we're including links to the blog and all of the links to the uh, photo P the Twitter uh, photo desk, etc. Inside the Google Hangout on here, so you guys can come back and check out the the Google invite, and we should have article links there. Mm -hmm. Releases. Do I need when we get a lot of questions on releases? Releases. It is confusing. I, I can understand why people are uh, have problems and, and don't always know when they need a release because most of the time you think, well, if somebody's not recognizable, why do I need to make a release? So uh, there are reasons for people that may not be recognizable to you, but if they can actually recognize themselves because their foot has a tattoo in it and you took a picture of their foot and somebody can recognize that and can prove that in a court of law. You would, you should have a model release. So we have this handy dandy little ta uh, table that we actually have in our support website to help you understand whether you need a release or not. So obviously the first one recognizable person, I think you guys would know that you need a release. You have a model, a photo with a model in it. Obviously you can see that person. They would want to be have a release. Um, silhouette obscured body parts. So like I mentioned, only if it's recognizable to that person. If there is a foot with a tattoo and all you see is the feet and you want to use that photo and you don't have the model release, Photoshop out that tattoo so somebody can't recognize it. Also, if there's photos 
uh, of a body part and it's in a series and they can and that person can prove that that was their arm because they have photos of themselves uh, before and after that initial photo was taken. I would imagine maybe yeah, the arm might well, not be the enough. Scenario, the scenario was that if you if you did a photo shoot with a model um, and you decided to license and you didn't get a release uh, and some of the photos were only for her body parts, uh, she could argue or the model could argue that uh, because of the context of the shoot that you tricked her uh, into using the photos for commercial purposes without her permission and she would be able to reference the photo shoot and the other photos in that shoot uh, as context to the judge to say that um, you know, that something sneaky had happened here where mm -hmm. she didn't give consent for commercial usage, but you still cropped her out or used photos of her, took her time, uh, and took her license to uh, commercially profit uh, off her likeness. And so that's where issues come up and where they have come up and why the whole contextual word comes up all the time. If, if the judge could reasonably say, yes, that's that person, and they've been able to prove it because mm -hmm. of X, Y, Z, um, then that's when this comes up, and that's the subjectivity that we, we take when looking at photos. And so if we will look at all the photos, and if we believe you need a model release, we will let you know that we will need a model release. However, you can avoid getting that message back, and it will make, make us run through your, fa your pictures and process them faster. Is if you think that they can recognize themselves, include a model release. And best practices, just get a release. If you just can. get a release. You know, if you're shooting, if you know, you have a friend or someone helping you, uh, be up front with them and just try and get that release to begin with. Yeah, and uh, we've heard from people, just make sure your friend is very friendly and mm -hmm. happy mm -hmm. and maybe they will convince people to get releases. And there's lots of release apps. I think we're promoting easy release as a yeah. really easy way you, people can sign with their, their finger. So get down on that on your app and then you have a release app that you can use whenever you're taking photos. We also just posted an article too about model releases. A lot of like, uh, Inside the blog. Videos and everything yeah. as well. And oh, that's actually a really interesting quiz because or the article is really interesting, and then the quiz at the end actually just sort of validates how much you remember from the article itself. So it's yeah. a good way to to see was I really paying attention, and you know, do I have the skill set to to know whether a, a photo requires a model release or not? Um, large group or crowd of people. So only if people could recognize themselves in that crowd, or if you could single anybody out yep. with cropping. So the files are in such a high resolution that. Let's say somebody did like a 200 by 100 pixel image. Could you single somebody out? Mm -hmm. Could I buy this image royalty free, single out an individual, and cause a liability issue? Uh, if the answer is yes, then you need a release. You need a release. Uh, and uniformed individuals. So I guess anyone that's using, it's almost like the trademark logo, uniform workers, mm -hmm. you'll need a release for them. Yeah. Even if maybe you can't even see their faces, there's batch numbers, there's other yeah. ways for people to recognize themselves. Um, in the releases article in the, on the blog, do we talk about property releases at all? Is there anything that we want to talk about with respect to property releases? Uh, no, we haven't really touched on property releases yet. They'll probably go into our next articles. Okay. Um, but basically, if you have uh, other people's artwork or if you're on private property, uh, it's always a good idea to get a property release. So we'll have an article on that shortly. Cool. Um, so what do buyers want? Everybody that joined us for a John Doe workshop or asked questions, really what they want to know is what do buyers want so that I can sell my photos? Um, and what photos at, at, at Prime have been sold the most? They wanted lots of details on what uh, the usage is right now. You know, some stuff we can give you data on and some stuff we really can't. So we're going to try to be as, as open as possible without uh, opening up too much confidentiality here. So landscapes to date have been the ones that have been most sold on Prime. So we've sold the most landscapes, which actually makes sense in many ways because Prime has lots of beautiful landscapes. Quite, quite a few. Quite a few landscapes have sold um, among many other things. Some people photos, which, is, which has been great. A few editorial shots. So definitely we've had a nice melange or a nice group mm -hmm. of photos have been mm -hmm. sold. And this is likely going to change that landscapes have been the most sold. But as, as, as the date that I wrote this PowerPoint deck, it was mm -hmm. Photos of people are the most searched, though. So arguably, uh, we will start seeing photos with people becoming the most popular mm -hmm. sold photo. Mm -hmm. and, and by people, we mean uh, human concepts. So happy, working, playing, things that would involve a, a human or a person. Uh, so not necessarily specific people, but things that people would do. Uh, cool. Is most searched. Uh, what's trending? 
So people wanted to know if I was going to take pictures this week or over the next month, what should I be looking for? So lifestyle photos is really popular. And that's kind of like what you know was just talking about. Photos of people are the most searched. Lifestyle, people doing certain things, things, that type of stuff. Natural, very human. Genuine. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Yes. People who are in their environment because so many businesses now work globally. Their mm -hmm. their marketplace is global, and um, they want to see people using their product or their service in their area, in that unique area, in the region. Wild. Yeah. So you know they want they want all sorts of you know ethnicities and environments to sort of you know mm -hmm. in show terms, that they're global. Trying to take multiple photos of that situation, so you're getting something close up, getting something far away. Yeah. Try and get a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. so that you're seeing as much. Buyers want option. Well, not necessarily option, but we're seeing a lot of buyers wanting a particular story, or they'd be interested in buying a set mm -hmm. of images to mm -hmm. go along with a story or a particular campaign. So something that tells a story is always very good and unique. And that's something we've heard from buyers as well, sort of what Laura was talking about. They see one photo and they're like, that's a really great photo. Now I want to see it from a different angle and I want to see with a little more negative space here so that yeah. I can play around with it. So what we are going to be telling people in an email, and we'll tell you guys now too, is if you have photos from one, sh one shoot or a series of photos from the same shoot, upload those together and put them into a set. Prime now has the ability to see photos that are like photos that were from the same shoot. So we pull that in. So when you look at a photo uh, in the focus page, you'll be able to see photos from that shoot. So if a buyer wants to see a photo that's similar from that same shoot but at a slightly different angle, they have that ability to see that. Now, uh, I know Monet, many of you guys are like, well, I don't want to upload all my photos that all look kind of the same. It's going to ruin my profile. The nice thing with the stats is that you can make all of those all those photos private, create a set of those private photos, and you don't have to show those all of your photos from that same shoot inside your public profile. Choose the one you like the most, choose your favorite one, the one you think is the most beautiful, make that one public, but put all of the photos in the shoot into a set so that we can pull those into prime. Um, travel photos, those are also really trending, or photos of places, like I know that we got a, a lot of requests for Brazil because of the World Cup, so you know that there's going to be a sporting event somewhere in the future. Likely, if you take photos of that location, that would be a compelling image for people to buy. Um, we talked about work-life balance, so the ability to see people working in different locations, the Starbucks outside in the park, um, talking inside uh, an office with beanbag chairs and stuff, and so that's sort of like tech-friendly, those types of things, a little bit more genuine sort of real-life workshop. So does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. Basically, people don't want to see stock-like photography of the white background of the apple, etc. Even though I did take a fantastic apple photo. Some people look at. But not stock photography. And that's what we've heard from our buyers too. That's one of the reasons why they actually really like Prime is that the photos that appear there don't look like stock photography. They're looking for something that's repetage. Like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they want something that's really unique and yeah. really a, a really beautiful photo, not just something that's generic. And something that's not necessarily posed or staged, those those moments that are really hard to capture. The genuine They're hard moments. to recreate, mm -hmm. genuine moments. And I think overall, um, I should probably say that they're aspirational. Really, that's what people are looking for because somebody, like a buyer is going to come, they want to sell their product, they want to sell their service. So mm -hmm. they want people who are not, I'm not talking about stocky, super smiley, super white teeth. I'm just saying like people who are aspirational looking, like mm -hmm. you, you want to be there, you want to be in that place, you want to use that product. You know, you want to you want to sort of be and you can see yourself, yourself that in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 in the realm of possibility. And or, I think sorry, yeah, or, no, sorry. or conceptual things. I, mm -hmm. I find uh, I have a lot of buyers approaching me looking for specific images that are are really interesting and compelling, and, and they have a particular theme or style. Uh, for example, you know, the story that could be attached with one particular photo is it could be a vampire story, or it could be a story about Space. So a lot of really interesting sort of potential book covers, mm. um, you know, f for our community because a lot of the stuff is really creative and and tells a story mm. in one shot. Mm. So a lot of those uh, are doing well as well. 
And as Laura mentioned before, follow our 500 px prime photo desk, so it's at 500 px prime PD, so you can check, check that out. We're posting there fairly regularly about things that our buyers are looking for or asking us for. Definitely link that to your uh, social network. Uh, some people asked us who our buyers are, so they wanted, why I think they wanted to make sure that we actually have buyers. So we actually do have buyers, um, and they come from a, a, they come from all over the world. So it's a nice cross section, and they're all international companies. So we have uh, from all over uh, Europe and in North America as well. Um, and they run the gamut between publishers, there's agencies, travel bureaus, uh, magazines. So. Here's just a, a little grab bag of some of the clients that we have, but they're really across a nice range of industries. So there isn't one specific industry that we're focusing on. Uh, I think book publishers was one that I didn't think we would initially would be a really compelling customer, but they are. They've turned out to be a really compelling customer. Book publishers really love the beautiful photos, and I think for Laura's uh, point, that one photo really tells a story, and that's what they're looking for in the cover. Um, pricing. So as we know right now, uh, all the photos are $250. Uh, we are uh, investigating potentially other pricing, uh, maybe a web or social type pricing with a smaller resolution photo. We're still sort of sussing this out to see what our contributors are willing to, to accept and whether there's a, a market there from a buyer perspective. But right now we only offer all of the photos at $250, which is very simple. Um, and then it just said simple pricing. So we initially launched with the 250 because of the simplicity and, it, and the really simple licensing, everything's royalty free, et cetera. It appeals to buyers. So it was a way for us to um, generate some buzz around the, of the, of the prime offering and to make it really simple for, for buyers to understand. And to speak to this, uh, the license is very simple. The equivalent on most other stock photo sites is that uh, it's a multi-seat, unlimited print. Uh, license, but it's a standard royalty-free license. So there's no uh, beyond the unlimited print multi-seat. Uh, you can't redistribute it like we talked about. You can't sell it to other clients. Um, so it's basically like any other royalty-free license, but with those added provisions that customers like, uh, and that's why we're able to charge two fifty uh, and not two dollars or five dollars uh, like other stock photo mm -hmm. agencies. Agreed. Um, one of the things we just want to let people know is that we have that interest in exclusive buys. So exclusive buys are when a client wants to buy your photo and they want no one else to have it. Um, so we have had that experience. And as we get those requests, our team's negotiating higher prices and rights manage licenses for our contributors. So that is available to all of our prime contributors, but only if you are actually exclusive with us. So if you want to be eligible for exclusive buys, your photos have to be exclusive to Prime. They can't be on another stock photo site. They can't have been licensed before. Uh, that is why you're going to be negotiating a higher price and, um, and get more money from this. And these are in the thousands of dollars. Yeah. They are actually very lucrative. But again, your photos have to be exclusive with 500 PX. So this is one incentive for you to choose exclusivity. Um, and when you're actually filling up the content ingestion forms, uh, but they have to actually be exclusive. We don't want you guys to be sued when we find out later that it actually wasn't exclusive. Um, so one of the questions again that we talked at the beginning was how do I promote promote myself? A lot of the contributors and the community of 500 PX aren't necessarily professional photographers, but they are either. Uh, talented amateurs or people that want to become professional photographers. But promoting yourself is something that not everybody likes doing and has that skill set. Uh, and we do want to try to help you with that a little bit and we want to help you understand how you can do that yourselves as well. Um, so one thing you can do is build a profile in the community. So we have, a, we have ISO, which is our blog. Feel free to email help if you have topics. Write articles, start building a profile in the community. Start getting photographers to know who you are. Um, and start just getting your name out there. Social sharing, so uh, many people have Facebook pages or personal pages. For your photography business, I recommend you creating a Facebook brand page that actually shows that you are a company in itself, and that should link back to your 500px profile, so that's a way for you to share images on Prime and drive buyers to the Prime site and drive buyers to your Prime profile, which we'll go into in a second. Um, and share that photographer profile. 
uh, with your friends. Maybe you have friends that are creatives, people that buy, maybe they have friends that are creative and they'll share that stuff uh, with their friends. The social media is a great way to promote yourself and you have, there's different, lots of different options, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Choose a social media provider, choose as many as you want and start sharing your data. Anything else on the social sharing promotion stuff? Mm -hmm. I think this is a really good way. We have, like, Five Hundred PX has its own brand page. We get, a, we have a lot of people liking that. And the nice thing with Facebook, if you create a brand page and you get enough people liking it, you'll start getting insights about your audience, and that's really interesting and useful for you to understand how you can actually promote yourself even more. And hopefully, I'm not going so quickly. I know I have a tendency to speak really quickly, so <laughs> apologies there. Um, so this is something we have launched this week. It's the photographer profile page. So you can go there now if you are a contributor on Prime, and um, and you can find yourself. We're going to be sending an email uh, within the next 24 hours to all of our Prime contributors with links to your profile and ways and tips that you can share. As you can see, it'll have your name. It'll include photos that you have. It'll allow you to share those photos directly through your social media. On the left-hand side, you can see the share buttons or email that out, um, but you're not restricted to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or Google Plus. Feel free to take the link and publish it any, to any site that you want. Get your name out. When you send that link, people will be drawn back to your profile on Inside Prime, and they'll be able to see photos that you have and, and potentially sell them. So come follow us on this journey, and now we're going to open it up for some questions. Okay. Hold, please. Let me see if I can find this. Okay, I am going to stop sharing so you're not seeing. I already switched it. Oh, you already switched it. Oh, great. Oh, this is the best. Okay, hold on. Let me just get to the chat. Okay, first question is okay, Matthew Harris. Asks, I had a bunch of pictures requested a while ago. Is it possible that the keywords, which included model name and my name, is why I never had confirmation? Um, no, we wouldn't, unless there weren't enough keywords or unless the keywords were completely irrelevant. Um, and even in that case, we would have sent you back a note. Uh, just write us at help at 500px.com and we can definitely take a look. Just send us your username or if you have the the file IDs, uh, we'd love to take a look. You can edit your keywords before or after the fact, after yep. you uh, submit the form. So feel free to just go in there and have a look. Um, but ultimately, check with help at 500 so we can check these individual files. Yeah. Uh, Terry Hafner asks, what if the photo is a street one? No need for a model release in the USA, right? Uh, again, it's the case if somebody can single themselves out in the scene. So if somebody can single themselves out, uh, either by a crop, then even, especially in the U.S. actually, uh, you do need it. The U.S. Mm -hmm. and France are actually the most litigious uh, countries. Yep. And the one really scary thing is that there's no limit on the financial uh, amount that a lawsuit uh, for this kind of case. So there's no actual limit. So a model can sue for however much they want. It could be as frivolous as they want. So just be as careful as possible. Yeah, if they feel that you're making money on their likeness, they will probably, they will likely, like you said in the U.S., where people like tort law, they will likely sue people. Uh, and also on um, the street photos, just because we talked about this in the workshop, uh, Paris uh, Eiffel Tower at night is copyrighted, so you probably wouldn't have known that. I certainly wouldn't have. So if you take a photo of a street photo and it happens to have the Eiffel Tower at night that actually is copyrighted and you could get sued. So um, there are some little intricacies that we're hoping to sort of help out with some blog posts, but there are some things that you should need to know about that. Um, John Clegg asks, landmarks and monuments, buildings and famous scenes, does it need release permits? I would short, say probably. Short answer is sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> it really depends. <laughs> it really depends. <laughs> If you have a question about it, you can ask us about it ahead of time, but most of the time you're probably going to. If it's modern artwork, yes. If it's a public uh, national park, for example, no. Um, but if the artist is protecting that artwork or that landmark mm -hmm. or that architecture, like the 
uh, was it Frank Gehry? Frank, yeah. Uh, How about Frank Lloyd Wright? Any of like the really yeah, high-end architecture? So architects? famous, famous architects, famous buildings like that. I mean, I think we can take New York, that New York Stock Exchange. Uh, Sydney Opera House. Sydney anything? Opera House. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's some landmarks where if they're the primary focus, then it's a no-go. But if they're a minimal part of the scene, then it's okay. Uh, as Brian mentioned, just ask us. We can tell you. Uh, you can Google it. Uh, just basically Google uh, landmark stock photo or landmark commercial usage, uh, and you should be able to find something quite easily. And uh, I know that we had a photo in a stadium that was taken that somebody wanted to buy. So I know if you take a photo of something in a stadium, it, you may want to check with that stadium owner because it's a private property. Yeah, so, it doesn't hurt to do a little bit of research. You know, call the stadium and say, you know, hey, do I need a release or can I get one? Uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to, to ask or to, to do some research first or after. Cool. Uh, Jorge Gomez asked, if somebody license, licenses my photo for commercial use, can I still sell prints? Um, personally, I think the answer is yes. You can sell personal prints. You could sell canvas prints of it. You can promote yourself with this, but you can't sell it. Now, in the, unless it's non-exclusive, then you would be able to continue to license it. Even um, exclusive, uh, you can definitely still sell prints. Yeah. We so, actually yeah. put that in, in the uh, in the contributor agreement that of all the things you can do, you still own the photo, you still have the rights to use the photo in any way to, to publicize yourself, and you can still sell prints even if it's not just exclusive. Cool. Um, yeah. And as I mentioned in before, you still retain all the copyrights for your images, so that's still the case no matter what. Uh, Rajesh asked, can you share some stats on how many sales have taken place on 500px Prime? Mm -hmm. I don't know how comfortable our, our owners are going to feel about us sharing sales. All I can tell you is we are definitely selling photos. Um, we are increasing the sales of our photos. Uh, apart from that, I really can't give you a lot of detail. If you want to rephrase it with something else, I'm not going to give you actual numbers because that's not great to have. I think we can say that we're, we've been happy mm -hmm. with the sales. Yeah. Um, and we're, it's working out well. And we're only, I think, we're in our third month now. Yep. That's um, what I was going to say. For, for, for three months, we're doing really well. Yep. Considering. Um, our third, we have our third month anniversary on June 3rd. So that's, we did, we did release in March, but we were beta for about 20 days before we actually released live. So um, April 3rd was the actual launch date. So on June 3rd, we'll hit our three month anniversary. Yay. Yes. Okay. Um, Ryan asked, how many photos have actually been uploaded to Prime? Um, interesting. I'm wondering what submitted to Prime are available in Prime. Hmm. How do we want to answer that? Both answers would be hundreds of thousands. Yeah, hundreds of thousands. Okay. Hundreds of thousands. And um, we're getting more and more uploads every day. Yeah. Uh, we're, I, don't, I don't think we want to let the cat out of the bag yet. We're quite proud of how large our collection has gotten in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. we're also very excited about the number of photographers that are participating in Prime. Um, the number is amazing, and we'll probably do some kind of marketing about it. Ab about it again. I just, we just don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Um, but as far as how many photos, uh, it's, it's in the hundreds of thousands. Uh, and uh, anybody who has their store enabled, a buyer can request to license the yep. photos. Um, so then we're definitely way into the hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Uh, so if you have your store enabled, so I'll just go, give you guys a little bit of update, a little update on that. So if your store is enabled and you're pushing your photos to the store, they will appear on Prime. The They won't appear at the top because we don't have all the model release numbers and we haven't actually had to take a look at them, but they will appear in Prime. Um, but there is incentive for you to fill out the content submission form. So some people may decide, you know what, I'm just going to wait and see if I get a purchase, and you feel free to do that. It's just that if you do get uh, one of your photos purchased, we need to then work with you to make sure that we have all the content release forms. So it's a bit of a scramble. If you finish and you submit all your content release forms, which is always good practice to do, and somebody purchases your photo, but our content editors haven't had a chance to look at it, we'll immediately take a look at what you've submitted. And if it, everything's working, we can submit that transaction and we can start paying you as quickly as possible. 
So it's better for you to submit your photos, but you cannot, or you cannot submit anything to Prime if you don't want to, as long as you've enabled your store and you're pushing stuff to your store. But the transaction will happen a lot quicker, and there'll be a lot more buyer happiness if you finish and submit your content submission sure. It's just often time, time is of the essence. A buyer yeah. may want a photo, and they may want it that day. So. Yeah. And we've had to turn some buyers down because we couldn't get the photo in time. Yeah, and unfortunately, yeah, people lose out on a, a pretty good sale because they weren't able to get us the photo in time or they just didn't respond. So. Yeah. On, on that note, mm -hmm. we, we should probably tell people that they should make sure that all of their contact details are updated. Absolutely. In your profile, yeah. in your 5 PX profile, make sure you have the most recent email address that we can contact you on, your first name, your last name. That'll be super helpful for us to contact you. We've had requests for purchases that we just probably don't have the most up-to-date email and we can't actually make the purchase happen. And check your other folders, your junk mail or promotions folders yeah. or whatnot to make sure you don't miss out on anything. Uh, John asks, how does my photos are secured, oh, sorry, I'm sure he's asking, are my photos secured online and on the 5 PX database? So your store photo is secure, nobody will be able to take a look at that? Or unless they purchase something. So if you upload your high-res version, nobody will have access to that. The 500px, uh, your profile on 500px will show whatever fo public photos you uh, upload, so you can protect them any way you like. Um, the 500px database, mm, I don't know, like, we are secure? Uh, I, we I use, probably could probably... We use authentication tokens. Um, we work with... Uh, with our database service. Provider. Yeah, OVH, and like we make sure everything CDN. is secure, CDN. There's there's no direct URL link to the high-res image. No. Uh, and it's never the same URL. So uh, it has to have been an authenticated purchase, and only the purchaser actually has access to that link. Yeah. So even if I, as an admin, went and tried, tried that link, it wouldn't work. It only works for the purchaser. Yeah. Um, John also asks who usually buys photos. So uh, we brought up sort of a handful of the buyers. So it ranges across um, publishers and agencies. We've had people that are small business owners that have bought photos to appear on their website. Kind of runs the gamut of, of buyers. There aren't any buyers, at least I don't believe there are any buyers that are just buying it for their personal use. All of them appear to be using them for commercial editorial purposes. Um, Alessandro asks, what about having a dedicated page with buyers up-to-date requests? Can't always keep up with tweet stream. We're working mm -hmm. on, because we get quite a few, we try to sort of bundle them up and give a much uh, sort of a general uh, guideline. Because sometimes we'll get a request, we'll be able to fulfill it, and then the request doesn't exist anymore. Um, so we're working on contributor newsletters, blog mm -hmm. posts, uh, those kinds of things to keep everyone up to date and do more of a high-level trend uh, report. Mm -hmm. And I think, so we're working on that, and otherwise, so the in-the-moment requests that we get are coming through the, the photo desk through the account. So that's the best way to keep up to date, though I don't know if that's going to help you 100%, Alessandro, but um, as we build out this product, maybe we can do other things if we think that's going to be helpful for you guys. Okay. Yeah. Alexandra also asks, what about allowing people to load pick to prime but not displaying them on the user profile? Opt for select picks display. So you don't you can upload your photos to your profile but not put them on the public profile. So people that are checking at your profile can't see them. But you can submit those photos to Prime. Yeah. The, I think so, yeah. Yeah, and, and when you go to manage your portfolio on yeah. PX, you can take them out of your public profile and put them in a set. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually something we're we're gonna start recommending is that people upload the entire series from the shoot, yep. but then take the one or two images that really stand out of the series, put those in your public profile on 500px, and then put the rest in the set, and those will still surface on Prime uh, when people will be able to see the, you know, see more from the set. Uh, they'll be able to see it there. So. Cool. Uh, Matthew Harris asks, you mentioned Prime Profile. Can you give me some more information on this? I'm keen to find all the pictures you have accepted in one wall and then spread the link to Facebook, etc. So yes, the Prime Profile, if you go to 500px.com, or yeah, Prime, and then slash your username, you will find your profile. So that is how you do it. So all of your photos that are available on Prime will be visible on that page with your name associated to it, etc. We're going to send everybody, all Prime contributors should be getting an email. In the next 24 hours. Yeah. 
So uh, anyone that's contributed to Prime and has their photos submitted to Prime will get an email from us. So take a look at your inbox, and then, like Laura said, take a look at your promotions or your social inbox, too, just in case it gets pushed there. Uh, it'll be an email with uh, a link to your photo, links to the photo desk, tips and tricks to sharing the stuff on Facebook, and some more hints on how to promote yourself. Um, Andrew P. asked, how large is the 500 PX user base? Uh, millions? Four million. Four million, Andrew. Um, Marissa, what about specific locations that would be recognizable? I want to shoot a series at a vacation, lo uh, at a vacation location, different towns, streets, etc. What about something that, that would be recognizable? So I think if it's public property, you're generally okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're on a resort, for example, though, you'll probably need a, some kind of property release. Yep. Uh, and so. then, yeah. And if you have models or people in the photo, make sure you, you keep, on, keep an eye on getting a model release for them. Uh, oops. Hold. Marissa. Also, as a new contributor, how many photos would you recommend I upload? I don't upload as many as you can. Yeah, I've, I've worked in several stock photo agencies, and there's no golden number. Uh, I've seen photographers do really, really well and make a living off a few hundred, uh, and I've seen others that need tens of thousands to make the same. Uh, basically, the quality of your photos, the uh, sellability of your photos uh, is what matters. So there's no golden number. Just shoot what you love, find a niche, uh, and mm -hmm. it, sh you should, it should work out well for you. And you, again, check the Prime Photo Desk. Take a look at what we're looking for and start shooting those photos. That'll one way to certainly get buyers to start looking at your photos. Um, and I'm just going to wait to see if there's any more questions. Nope, there's no more questions. Um, what was that? Sorry? Yeah. So Alex mentions, uh, and Alex, our fantastic moderator here, who heads up our support team. Uh, if you have more questions after this session, feel free to email help at 500px.com. Dot prime. I'm like a prime on the brain. Help at 500px.com. Um, Alex will be able to either answer the questions or pass it to us, and we'll help answer the questions uh, on behalf of support. Where can I get release forms and other permits? So John just asked that. So inside of the submission form on Prime, so it is a bit convoluted to find this, so uh, I realize that, and we're going to try to provide as many links to that as possible. But if you go to your profile and you click Settings, so in your profile you'll see a little box for Settings. If you click Settings and then go to the store, it'll show all your photos that are available in the store. Um, there in that, in that uh, space you'll be able to submit your license forms there. And when you click the Submit License Form, It'll ask you to upload a model release, and inside there you'll be able to access model release forms and property release forms. So there's PDFs that you will be able to download, uh, and then you could just keep them, print them out, and bring those along, and then you can hand those out and get people to sign them when you actually take photos of them. So that's one way to get them. And then if you want to use a release app, Easy Release was an app that we could recommend. Um, I don't know if Easy Release has a property release. Yeah, yeah does, they does. do modeling property releases. And the great thing about Easy Release is that it comes in multiple languages. Uh, and if we can see that it was an Easy Release model release, we're willing to accept those additional languages. We have a much harder time with non-standard releases in different languages, and you might actually get uh, a decline on those because we just we can't read them, and we're not lawyers in foreign languages, mm -hmm. so we can't uh, translate them. But if you use Easy Release, uh, that's a good way to use non-English releases. So that, I would recommend that if you have an app that you can download uh, or a, an a iPhone or an Android phone or whatever that you can use. Um, otherwise, download the releases from 500px. Or if you have a standard release form that has standard release wordings and it's in English, that likely will work as well. Anyone who's been around knows that there's one certain release language that's used by about five or six different agencies. Yeah. And it seems to be the universal standard, and that's what Easy Release uses and all the big uh, agencies use. So certainly you can download it. And I, we might even have a link to the form from the support page, but I know certainly we have a link to the release forms from the content ingestion form for Prime. It's also really important for people to know that they should fill out everything on that form when they can, yeah. uh, because it will get declined. It comes back partially filled in. Yep. Um, we need to have contact details. You can't just put your model's name and that's it. You know, like we, we have to know that they're contactable and you have to have some sort of proof that they are who they say they are. 
which also leads me to signatures because we get a lot of people typing them in with the handwritten font and we can't accept that. That's, that's no good. Or cutting and pasting. They have to sign it, send them a JPEG, send them whatever. They can print it out, sign and send it back to you. Um, but we can't accept cut and paste or font or typed. So they have to be handwritten signatures, contact details. It's important to include ethnicity if you can. Um, and also age, birth date. You know, that's important for us because we need to know that some of our models are of legal age to sign whatnot or whether or not we should be asking for a minor's release. Um, also to buyers who might be promoting a service or product that is age sensitive. So they might be, you know, like beer selling ads. to a certain market. Like alcohol in the States, you know, the, the legal age is 21, over here it's 19, it's different in different countries. So um, buyers might be wanting to know, they might ask about a specific model and say, we need to know that she was of this age. Um, yeah, so it's important to get that information when you can. And if the model is a minor, then they do need a yeah. signature of a parent. A parent or guardian. Yeah. Um, and if, for whatever reason, this came up in another session, if the model is deceased, then you need to have the next of kin or the, I guess, the legal mm -hmm. inheritor of that person's estate sign yeah. the release form. The person who owns the photograph, essentially. Right? Yeah. Whoever, yeah. Or the uh, family member. Whoever family member, whatever. Okay. Um, so we're just wrapping up, so thanks everybody for joining. Again, um, answer or sorry, ask any questions that you have uh, to help at 500px.com. Uh, it's our support channel. If we get lots of questions about uh, content ingestion and buyers and filling out forms and prime stuff, we'll set up another one of these sessions so that uh, we can make sure that we communicate clearly to you guys what we're looking for and make sure that you have all the uh, help that you need. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone.